I am Cornolio. I need picada for my bunghole. You'll have to wait your turn, sir. Are you threatening me? My bunghole will not wait. <laughs> this will be a uh, balanced build. Pretty much the same video that I did prior with the balanced build level 205 hours. But this is going to go a little further into the weapons and the farming locations, that kind of stuff. You can do this as assassin or ranger, but I chose strider because eventually you're going to need to farm, and strider is farmer. Newly arisen walker of the path, take up arms. To me, come to me. So, step one, choose Strider. And then, however you want to, make your way to Grand Soren. And once you're in Grand Soren, continue through the quest. However you want. Whoever you want. And as you progress through the quest line, meet the Duke. And now at this point, after meeting the Duke, you've got access to Blast Arrows. So, after meeting the Duke, go get your Blast Arrows. Get any weapons that you'd like to get from the Black Cat, which, since I'm Strider, Nothing I need. Assassin would take use of the Force Hatchet. Camellia here will sell Blast Arrow's infinite supplies after you meet the Duke. And of course, Blast Arrow's are like a game changing item. And you'll want to have dodge roll, and you'll want to have splitter, and you'll want to have fivefold for the bow. Go ahead and grab yourself barbed nails. You can get one through this doorway here, and then just above it, where the bandits are hanging out, the little cave alcove, you can also get barbed nails. Try to get two, at least one. This is a pretty high chance of this chest giving them. And now we're ready to go to Bitter Black Isle, talk with Olra, and progress your way through Bitter Black Isle, accept the uh, notice board quests, loot some stuff if you'd like. This video will just be showing the key items for looting, and the key locations, and the key enemies, but of course you can go at your will. This 
whole video will probably be similar to that five hour build video that I did prior, except with the farming and such, it could increase about an hour. So expect to be level 200 with all of the tier two weapons after about six, maybe seven hours. Fully upgraded, gold forged and everything. And then you make your way to Barak, meet him. And then we're off to get the Void Key. Once we get the Void Key, we can get the Moon Beam Gen. And then we can get the Dragon's Ear, Dragon's Ire Bow. And we'll be almost pretty well set. You can get the uh, Martyr's Talisman or the veterans from Fornival, it will increase how quickly you level up, though the only time you truly need to level up quickly is to get to level 47 to use the Dragon's Ear, Dragon's Ire. This chest is pretty important, it usually has rancid bait, and then also over here, this chest also often has rancid bait meat which is going to be crucial for dragon forging and also crucial for rift crystal farming and cursed horns cursed dragon horns if we need them but we should need them we'll get one with dark bishop and then we can just make copies at the black cat here's those blast arrows that we got from camellia And now the gargoyle. He doesn't spawn until you come up to this very corner by that chest. He's up there hidden. As you get closer to this chest, then he spawns. And blast arrows. You don't have to kill him. You could do the whole running maneuver. But hey, we got blast arrows, like 800 of them. Might as well fuck this guy's day up. And now we will have the void key. We can open up the gate to go further and then get the moon beam gen to unlock our bow, the dragon's ear. I'm just gonna call it dragon's ear. Yeah.
this plane. So from this perspective, this doorway here gives you a fork in the road, left or right. Go left and you'll get the dragon's ear bow. Now this will require level 47 without the stamina drain. So we just got to get to level 47 so that we can use it freely. Bring the fiend luring incense with you and enter the rotunda of the dread to spawn the elder ogres and eliminators. That setup will provide you the most experience for the room of spawns. So three and three and we would use the veteran or the talisman to get double XP. Gravity killing all of them. Stand on this ledge and get them all ready. The Elder Ogres are pretty simple. They fall twice and then they're dead. And they're pretty cooperative. They'll come up here and they'll drop very easily. The Eliminators, however, can be problematic. They also only drop twice and then die, but they lose interest halfway up and then they turn around and give up. And then they like to do their run and then they never fall because they're just hitting a wall and running. So you kind of have to encourage the eliminators to jump on the ledge. For now, I'm just going to focus on the Elder Ogres, get all three of them since they're easy, and then we'll get the Eliminators. Alright, so we got all three half done. One more drop for each one, and they'll be gone. Now the Eliminators, you'll have to constantly shoot them with arrows because they lose interest if you were to just hit them and then let them walk halfway through, they would give up and turn around start heading back. So if you keep them, I don't know, entertained, occupied, then they continue walking and looking for you. And you'll see examples of this. I'm sure they're going to turn around. Usually once they get up halfway to the stairs is about the point where... So I just saw his health bar vanish. So I... Oh, there he goes. He's, he's turning around again. A little dickhead. And this guy too.
this is the point that you want them on this ledge and then he does that and drops you don't want them to do the running lunge when they're on that ledge because sometimes they'll run and lunge and get stuck into the tree and they just can't get out then you can't gravity kill them or they like to get stuck right here on this wall and then never jump up so you walk away there you go hurry up and quickly get over there so he starts swinging instead of running and we're good Lava Rock will upgrade Dragon's Ear to 3 star. You can find it pretty common. Pyrosaurians will sometimes drop it, but really just uh, mining. Especially in Rotunda of the Dread, I think that's usually where I find a lot of them. And now we're ready to defeat Gazer, get blast arrows, or throw blast if you prefer. Blast arrows are pretty simple. And then you can just wait till he knocks himself out.
Now the Martyr's Talisman, I'm not sure really how long it lasts, but it lasts long enough to get double XP from Gazer, and then make your way to Barak to get more Blast Arrows, and then enough time still to get Death with Gravity at the bridge. So with that same Talisman burning in the background right now, we've got enough time to get death as well. And then with Dark Bishop and Cursed Dragon here, Blast Arrows are also a good choice. The likeliness of Cursed Dragon dropping Cursed Dragon Horn is very high, but if he does not drop Cursed Dragon Horn, I'd recommend reloading that save and trying again. Because we will need three of them for the notice board so that Barak will sell us tier two weapons. 
And if he only drops one, that's fine. We'll make two copies of the black cat, and then we'll have three. It's not that much. I can't remember. $60,000 or something like that. Now here in the Arisen's Refuge, get another Moon Beam Gem, and then this notice board quest for the Cursed Dragon Horns times three. Once you turn that in, Barak will have the tier two, three weapons, tier two weapons to purchase, which are well enough. At that point, the tier twos are so much easier to gold forge compared to the tier 3 weapons which require daemon materials and death materials so you can get these tier 2 weapons gold forged long long before you even have a thought of a tier 3 weapon existing in the game you can get all of this done pre daemon before even fighting daemon once you can get all the tier 2 weapons gold forged. And at that point, you're pretty well set. Like, your numbers are super high. The only difference are the bows. When it comes to the tier 2 bows, because they are permanently enchanted, they are very inferior to the tier 3 bows. So you will want to strive for the tier 3 bows later, but you can't even start tackling that until after you beat Damon. So for now, I'll just get the Helmbert daggers. That's all I can really afford. And then later, after farming gold and rift crystals, we'll come back and purchase the other weapons like the Bane Arc Staff and Chilling Focus and Grancis Flammers, all of those. And then we will purify Cursed Level 2 weapons for the others, like Purged Buckler and the Dragon's Tempest. The Moonbeam will give us Dragon's Glaze. Now we have a, another chance of gravity killing death over and over again multiple times you just need blast arrows and once you kill them with gravity you would exit the room and re-enter and you get the opportunity to do it again over and over again you can get to level 200 pretty easily here you just have to lure him in a certain spot and sometimes luring him is a bit of a task you have to give him a clear path so that he can either float to you or teleport to you. If there's a wall in the way, he'll get stuck behind the wall and you gotta try again. So, you just gotta toy with him a little bit. It's like a little game, a little mini game. But, eventually, once you get his attention over here, this top corner is where you want him to be placed for a moment. Fucking dickhead. Stuck again.
Alright, so once he's here, now you run all the way here, and he'll teleport right in front of you, and you will blast arrow fivefold for gravity. Or you do it again. You don't want him to be attacking you in that position. You want him to do the lantern. six five folds so 30 blast arrows and we can do that again and again at that rate I can do this two more times with my or no I can do it three more times yeah three more times with my current 90 blast arrows as long as my talisman lasts your beloved in forfeit and I shall see your will done choose how am I to choose no matter my answer the price is dead hollow choice who am I to stand as arbiter of two lives two lives what would you have me do you brought me here you if this be the will of the gods the order of the world then damn the Lord. Very well. If that be your wish, I shall claim my price. Stop! No!
All right, now at this point, everything is unlocked. We can come back through and farm for materials on many enemies. We can farm chests for level two novelty and level two weapons and level three novelty gear all of that the only thing we can't really touch are armor level threes and weapon level threes me particularly i don't care about the armors any of them so i'll not be going over any of the armors and then also i'll not be going any over the level three weapons because the level two weapons will be satisfactory this chest down here has level two yeah typically that's what I see there Now we're in the farming stage. Strider is farmer. Sleep arrows and master thief. You can do that on many enemies. Sinister hide from the Garm. Elder ogre fang from elder ogre. Rugged femur from gore cyclops. And you would just respawn if you use rancid bait meat. You would exit, re enter, and you have a couple times that you can just go right back in, and they'll spawn again, and you can just endlessly. This chest over there in the Black Abbey, this one often has weapon level 2 or novelty and then down here I think both of these as well
And a Strider is also a very good with man-eater chests. You can always do the downpour volley method. And farm for wrist, rift crystals from the man-eater. Because they will often drop a lot of them. Or just, they drop shit. After you defeat Living Armor in the Spar Yard, and you unlock the gate to go to the Fallen City, what comes in here are the three dragons, Frost, Thunder, and Fire. And you can farm them for their horns and their wings and everything, which are often needed for some of those tier 2 weapons. Mostly the enchanted weapons. And then after you defeat him, you can continue to kill or attack the horn just to ensure that you do get a drop that you want.
Now we have two more Moonbeam Gems. We've got the Dragon's Glaze behind this middle door out of the three. And then above, on the other end, we got Dragon's Roost Shield. Now I have plenty of money from selling materials that I don't care about and farming other stuff that I can buy the level tier 2 weapons from Barak. So Cursed Bite, Grancis Flammers, uh, Chilling Focus, Bane Arc Staff. Now once I have those, I'll want to purify the weapon level 2 cursed weapons and see if I can get purged buckler and uh, dragon's tempest, maybe sapphire daggers. And then we will just work on dragon forging all of those weapons. Assassin is pretty nifty for dragon forging because he can have access to four different weapons that he can dragon forge. Or Magic Archer, because he's got the staff. And he can Dragon Forge that easily with four times Magic Rebalancer. The hardest one to Dragon Forge would probably be Warrior, I suppose. And probably not even Mystic Knight, because he's got Comestion. And now for purifying. Get your pawn. And really, all you need to worry about is fighter, strider, mage. Don't worry too much about warrior, ranger, sorcerer, or the hybrids. It's just going by color. Because if you are fighter and your pawn is fighter, you're going to get warrior weapons. So, of course, just be fighter. It's not going to go vice versa. It's not going to play in your favor. It is a gamble, but you can determine what you're going to get. Make a save, a checkpoint save at that rest bed. And if you're not happy with the results, reload from that check. So we got Bane, Bane, Hollow, Hollow, Bane. So we got two weapons, but five purifications. It took three to get the two weapons. Just take note, reload. So instead of wasting two, then we would just only purify the three and we get two. But we already have Bane and we don't care about Hollow, so screw that. Now let's check out Fighter and see what we get there. Oh, oops. I selected rings or gear. Oh well, I'm probably going to reload this anyways. Let's try again with weapons. Let's see what five gets us. Okay, already have. Don't care. Don't care. Don't care. Don't care. We got three with five results. Let's see what happens if we switch vocations. Let's see what happens with Warrior, or Mystic Knight, or Sorcerer.
All right, go with five again. Oh, we got one from the start. Don't care, don't care, don't care. So it only required one, and we got Dragon's Tempest. So, reload, Strider Strider, purify one, and I get the one weapon that I care about. And I don't have to waste those other four. And now make a new checkpoint save. And we just tamper around and see how many it requires under what colors to get what we want. I'm looking for a purged buckler for one. Let's see how we're going to get that. So five. Five is fighter fighter. I will get purged buckler. I must only a strong if there is So now it's time to Dragon Forge all of these weapons. Magic Archer can Dragon Forge daggers and the spell bows and staves. With Magic Rebalancer times four and then Comestion, it'll be pretty easy for Magic Archer to Dragon Forge.
And this is why I don't care about the level 3 weapons. The level 2 weapons, you can gold forge them before even meeting Damon. With all the materials and requirements, you don't need anything post Damon. And everything that you can get is before you even meet him. Whereas the level 3 weapons, you can't even purify level 3 weapons until after you meet Damon. And then to upgrade them, gold forge them, you need Damon materials, so you need to kill him. I don't know, a good 10 times before you even get the weapons you want, before you get the materials that need to upgrade it. So you're going to get these well long before any of that transpires. And these level 2 weapons are sufficient enough. Actually, a lot of them are, like, overpowered. The only ones that are inferior are those permanent enchanted bows. Even the tier 1 weapons like that you would get from Grigory or purchased in the Everfall, those will outdo the tier 2 weapons because those are not permanently enchanted whereas the tier 2 three or the tier 2 weapons are. That's the only thing that really hurts them or holds them back is that permanent enchanted will always drop the physical component to boost up a magical component and then they become inferior dragon's glaze is very handy because it's got the freeze capability but ultimately the damage is just not on par especially when comparing it to the revenant tier 3 so when it comes to the tier 3 farming after meeting Damon, getting all the materials from Damon and death really the only ones that matter are the bows everything else tier 2 will suffice now the blood red crystal we will check out later it's a tricky one to get from Strigoi and then we'll be complete we'll have everything gold forged it's just those damn Strigoi I forgot to include my Mystic Knight Ensemble, the Almace, the Calibog, and Eden's Warden, those permanently enchanted swords. They're very easy to get, and they're very easy to upgrade. I will show you the locations. You can get the Almace in Bitter Black Isle, and you can also get it in Grancis. I'll put a video up there in the top showing Grancis locations for the Almace and the Calibog and Eden's Warden. But also I'll show here those weapons as well because they're easy enough to get. And then even easier to upgrade. Here in the Midnight Helix there are two chests that will spawn the Almace make a save so that if you do not spawn it you can reload these two chests are good chests anyways but only one of them will do the almace and then this one down here as well and if you do not get what you want reload and try again but the almace is pretty common here
and here the Tomb of the Unknown Traveler, this sword in the stone, will have Eden's Warden, or Scalding Razors, or something else, Fiery Talon or something like that, all three fiery weapons. But the Eden's Warden will spawn here often enough. And here where the golem is and the barbed nails are, just a smidge further up on this wall, climb the ledge and you can get the Kalibog lightning sword. And similar to Magic Archer's capability of dragon forging weapons, Assassin is very capable as well. With the Force Hatchet, he's getting double damage. And then he can dragon forge the short bows, or swords, or shields, or daggers. These three swords for Mystic Knight is what we're going for now so you would get a, the cursed dragon's health down with the force hatchet and the bow you can use blast arrows if you want to increase and then you just switch to the weapon at the last second for dragon forge So we got Eden's Warden, Dragon Forged. Next we'll go for Almace.
and then the materials for those three swords to gold rarify are quite simple to get. They're not big, difficult enemies. And now we have just about everything gold forged except for the blood red crystal for Rusted Staff and Dragon's Roost. Now here, once you enter this room and you're about to fight Damon, instead if you turn around and exit, you come back out here to the Fallen City, you will find two Strigoi that you can farm. But getting the blood red crystal is a bit of a nuisance. I'll leave a video on how to do that up at the top here. But ultimately you got to let them attack you, drain some of your blood, and then kill them, and then hope that they drop it. Which can be tricky. But now we've got two Strigoi out here and then we've got a handful of corrupt pawns which you can ignore the pawns just don't get too close to the building there's a pawn up there and if you get a little closer then the strigoi will spawn and then you can gain their attention get them down here get them to attack you and hope that you get a blood ray crystal. Ultimately, they have three attacks. They have like a punch. They have a kick. That's the kick. Here comes the punch, probably. Nope, there, okay. He went right for it. So that's his drain. Draining our blood. Now at this point, he's going to have a blood red crystal possible drop. Until he drains you, there's no chance. Usually the further away you are from him is when he'll do the drain attack. If you're too close, he'll punch. If you're too close, he'll kick. If you get further away, he'll often do the, the drain attack, the grab attack. And then there you are. You're pretty powerful. Even before meeting Damon, you'll be at, I don't know, 2,000 up to 3,000 attack with the weapons and your stats. And then augments will just increase it to above 3,000. At that point, you're pretty well set. And you didn't even need to farm any bitter black level 3 stuff or materials which that's when it starts taking a long time trying to get the bitter black level 3 weapons and gear all those cursed items you gotta farm all the materials you gotta farm the rift crystals to purchase it 
it gets tedious. But with these weapons, gold forged, it'd be just fine. And so that's it. You've got everything that you need. The level two weapons, ready to rock and roll. That's the end of the video. But I will continue a little further and we'll go with the Bitter Black level three weapons just to get the bows, Revenant Whale and the uh, Darkening Storm. The Blackwing Bow is not completely necessary. The Dragon's Tempest will be quite fine. It's unfortunate that that has a permanent lightning on it, but that's only the core single shot. Everything else functions just as well with high magic, and it's just a little lower than the Blackwing. So we will further go in and defeat Damon and maybe get a bitter black weapon level 3 from him because he does drop them or sometimes I think they're in the chest after defeating Damon then we unlock bitter black post Damon the second sequence of bitter black where we then farm some chests or Damon for the weapon level 3's though I typically just go straight to Damon there are chests I don't know maybe a handful of them especially in the third portion of Bitter Black like the Fallen City has quite a few chests that you can get weapon level 3's from uh, the Bloodless Stockade Spar Yard but ultimately I just tend to go straight to Damon farm there, rest for seven days, and then go straight to Damon again, farm, rest for seven days, and so on. And we'll see how many uh, weapon level threes we can get, and what we can get. Revenant Whale and Darkening Storm should be easy enough to get. I would say maybe five purifications, and we'll get those two pretty easily. The middle chest is always a blue uh, moonbeam. Don't really need to loot it necessarily. Eventually, you run out of things you can get with a moonbeam, so I'm not sure why it's always there. The very first chest on the left, I've seen weapon level threes in that one often enough. You can save, see what you get, and then reload. With uh, pre Damon, it's probably usually just going to be level 2 stuff. There's a novelty. And I won't even talk about gear. Usually you have to purify like 200, maybe 300 gears to get what you want. I think I'm to the point where I'll just ignore them. They're not quite that worth it. They are, but not quite that worth it. Brain Splitter comes to mind as worth it. Deadly Arrow, Arc of, the rest are not quite necessary. So we've defeated Damon. Now we've unlocked Bitter Black post Damon. And we run through and go get Damon again. And again. And again. And again. But that was the end of the video. That was about a six and a half hour run. And I was set. Now to further go and farm Damon over and over again to 
putting, you know, a few more hours on it to get those weapon level 3 weapons, which are not quite necessary. Uh, most people will go ranger with blast arrows, and that is very effective. It's, you know, it works great. I tend to go assassin force hatchet blast arrows because you need less blast arrows. I can carry more as an assassin versus ranger. May take a little longer. Definitely funner. Damon will drop weapon level 3s. He'll usually drop a cursed item and then his materials. Not this time. And then the chests. Uh, two of them are 
Maybe. I don't know. One definitely weapon level three, and then there might be a second one. Still that silly moonbeam gem that's always there. And if you just run straight through to Damon, kill Damon, and loot, versus all those chests prior, although Fallen City is worth it. Fallen City is pretty easy. You just run through and there's a good three or four chests in there that can have weapon level threes. And then, like always, we get the weapons and then we go to purify them and see what we can get. Become Ranger or Strider. Have the pawn follow. Make a checkpoint save. First, we're going to test to see how many purifications it will take to get what we need. Right now, I'm just looking for Revenant Whale, Darkening Storm, and I'll see if I can get Blackwing. Blackwing Bow is a little tricky to get. It takes some time. I've got ten weapon level threes. Probably won't be able to get the Blackwing. I don't care, there's one. After two, I got that. After three, I got that. Okay, so after three, and no black wing. Let's see how many more. Nope, nope. Nope, no black wing. So after three, and I'll get what I want. Luckily, the Revenant Whale and the Darkening Storm are very easy to gold forge. They just require daemon materials for the most part. No death materials compared to some of the others. I think Verge of Madness requires uh, death materials. And death is easy enough to farm with blast arrows and such, but a bit of a nuisance when you need his materials to gold forge things when compared to the ease of other materials I always keep that in mind and there you go probably after a total of 10 hours now we have everything absolutely that we need a balanced build 100% strider all vocations are unlocked all weapons for each vocation gold rarefied at least level 2, some level 3's. And that'll be all. Be there. If you've the need, no doubt.